Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on Indian Ethos in Management and this is going to be our uh, second lecture on total resources management. In the first lecture of mine, I gave you the brief idea about what this total resource management is. Uh, extending our discussion on the topic, I will be giving you uh, the different uh, concepts of different uh, sub ideas behind this total resources management, what is the scope of uh, this total resource management and many more ideas surrounding this entire discussion on the total resources management. So, extending our discussion on the topic of total resources management, now I will be telling you about the TRM and managerial effectiveness. So, TRM is basically related to the concept of managerial effectiveness as well because when we talk about the efficient and effective utilization of resources, we are actually indicating towards the effectiveness of management in general. So, for this purpose we need to uh, first identify the indicators of uh, resource utilization and resource efficiency and uh, in this way we can say that productivity of uh, the factors of production or any asset can be indicated by uh, turnover ratio or efficiency of labor by labor productivity. If I have to uh, suppose evaluate the efficiency of capital, I can do it by the way of capital output ratio that what is the output of my capital. If I have to evaluate efficiency of information systems, it can be done through uh, amount of information entropy. So, these can be evaluated uh, uh, in terms of uh, their contribution to the entire value chain of the business enterprise. So, productivity of asset can be uh, indicated uh, by, by their own uh, uh, indicators, by their own parameters. Suppose, if I have to talk about the efficiency of my workforce that is labor, it can be done by the labor productivity. So, efficiency of capital if I have to uh, measure it can be done by the ROI that is return on investment or what you also call as return on total investment. If I have to evaluate the efficiency of management, the, the management which is uh, working in the working to make all other sources or factors of production dynamic, it can be it can be done by the comparative analysis. It can be done suppose company A is going to be higher than that of company B if the above indicators of TRM are higher in case of A as compared to B. So, there can be a comparative analysis that uh, given this management uh, uh, of this company and all other resources are being constant, we can evaluate their efficiency. Within a sector also it can be done, various companies can be ranked on an in index of what you call as managerial effectiveness based on key and indicators or parameters and then you can uh, uh, evaluate their effectiveness. So, we have to understand that managerial effectiveness is one of the significant scope of TRM. TRM framework is increasingly being used for com competitive advantage and competitive growth as well. And if, if you are working in a competitive scenario, in fact, you have to be competitive and, for, and, and you have to be competitive for uh, managing your entire business uh, process with the limited resources. If you are able to, to perform uh, properly with the limited resources, that is your competitive advantage that is going to bring competitive advantage to you. So, companies uh, they need to focus their, uh, their, their attention on the strategic gearing. We, we use a term called strategic gearing and when I say gearing, I, I wish to uh, indicate towards uh, the, the, uh, you know, out, the, the greater output with the limited efforts. So, th this is what uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, derive or uh, uh, explain with the term called gearing. So, TRM framework basically presented uh, uh, by, by me here is useful in preparing organizations for the same. In this entire framework of TRM, uh, if we look at uh, its uh, supporting point, uh, it is supported with strategic marketing and, in, and empowering and facilitating management planning and coordination system some people call it MPCS that is uh, a system which is not only looking at marketing, but also empowering and facilitating the management planning and coordination system. So, it is going to act as a complete framework for ensuring competitive advantage and competitive growth and the latest technique uh, uh, are, are being uh, which are increasingly being used are many. If I talk about the costing segment or total cost management, there is a, a technique called activity based costing which is also known as ABC analysis which can help management in making their planning and control system systems more uh, decision making oriented that you can make a decision that this th these are the points where I can reduce the cost. 
The other aspects of uh, framework include uh, total risk management, total cost management, total human resource management, total quality management, total knowledge management and many more. There are different uh, uh, coordinates with which we are going to ensure the, the quality in a segmented manner. We are going to ensure the holistic control, holistic development of different segments and uh, this uh, TRM is basically aggregation of all of them. If we talk about uh, TRM and its role in the best corporate leadership, then the, the, the answer is yes, it actually contributes to the best corporate leadership as well. TRM can also be related to the best model of corporate leadership nowadays. The best model draws our attention to uh, these four uh, letters, one is B, E, S and T. So, B, E, S and T, these, fact, these are basically the factors to the competitive advantage. Corporate leadership, uh, if, we t uh, if we take into the consideration or if we take it as a coordinate, it implies market leadership through strong market presence and market dominance, that your presence is going to be felt by your competitors and also the customers. And uh, it implies becoming a dominant player in the market and uh, retaining your position that you are going to be the market leader or you are the market leader. Your decision is going to affect the functioning of entire market it is going to affect all the stakeholders. If we, uh, if, uh, and if we talk about achievement of best leadership, it can be done through leadership in B factor or the human resources factor. So, if we are able to manage our home human resources in a holistic manner in totality, then of course, we can emerge as the best uh, uh, corporate entity in terms of leadership or we can offer best of the leadership, corporate leadership to the business enterprise. Leadership in E factor, if we talk about that is cost leadership can also be done. Leadership can also be done in case of uh, quality leadership, which is being uh, reflected by alphabet S. And uh, uh, if we talk about the marketing leadership, the leadership in T factor, that is technological uh, leadership and research and development leadership that can also be provided. So, uh, we, what we are uh, willing to explain here is that TRM can uh, of course, offer the best of uh, leadership to the corporate entities. And it has, it has generally been said that we are here to change uh, the course of history, otherwise we will become part of the history. If you are not able to create history, then of course, you are going to be uh, the part of the history only and nobody is going to uh, discuss your business enterprise, your leadership, your company, your product or, or, or your entity. Uh, and, and, and it is going to become a routine affair of uh, the, the entire business discourse. So, nobody is going to take your name in terms of uh, leadership. So, only the, the first, second, first uh, name is going to be, uh, to, to be remembered, rest all is a story and it is going to be part of the history only. So, the best model basically suggests that the best organizations can change the course of corporate history by the way of offering leadership in terms of all four factors which we have just discussed. So, if you are going to offer best of leadership to these uh, factors of production, then of course, your leadership is going to be uh, uh, going to be the best or it is going to be regarded as the best of the leadership. And for that TRM is the only way out. So, this TRM approach with its focus on total resources, it, it actually takes us uh, uh, towards the strategic gearing of organizations. And, and the path of uh, this entire uh, gearing uh, or, or uh, the entire uh, discourse is basically the best model. You can, you can call it as a model or you can say that we are going to analyze it for our business enterprise. So, best model basically describes four routes to corporate leadership and corporate excellence and the first, first one is of course, the human resource route that the which is, which is being called as the behavioral route the way you behave uh, in, in your business uh, enterprise, the way your leaders behave, the way, the way your uh, uh, you know, staff behaves uh, in, in, at your workplace, that is basically the human resource uh, route to offer the best of the leadership. It can also be the cost advantage route that your company is, uh, is offering leadership in terms of cutting cost. You are best at uh, uh, producing at the possible minimum cost. So, that is your economic or the cost advantage route. You can take that route also to corporate leadership that you are going to be the leader in terms of offering best of quality at the, the, the least of cost. 
So, best best quality at least cost if you are offering then of course, you are making use of economic or the cost advantage route. You believe that I am uh, uh, my company is supposed to be known for its quality only. So, that can be your strategic or quality route that you offer leadership in terms of quality. People say that your, the, your name itself is enough. If your company's name comes, your brand name comes, people stay relaxed that see if be, it, it belongs to this company then of course, it must be of quality. The technical or technology route also you can uh, you can you can take if you, you if you wish to stay relevant in the market. What you can do is you can always uh, stay in sync with the the latest development, the latest technology. So that is called as technical or technological route of uh, uh, becoming a corporate uh, leader. So in TRM, basically the route to be taken for strengthening your capabilities is decided on the basis of your current standing and the current scenario in which your company is operating. So, which route to take out of these uh, uh, four routes that is decided uh, you know on the basis of your current standing that as a corporate entity what is your current stand, uh, standing, what is your current strength and, and, and what is the, is, is the need of the R that is current scenario. So, th these two components together they are going to decide uh, your uh, coordinate for the total resources management. The way the kind of leadership which you are going to offer to the to the uh, business enterprise that is going to be decided on the basis of your, your strength and your present scenario in which your company is, is, is operating. Uh, while uh, you know extending my discussion on the topic of total resources management, I need to uh, duly acknowledge uh, this uh, entire idea of total resources management to the source from where I am. I have taken this uh, idea. It is coming from a research paper called "A Holistic Approach to Strategic Gearing" by Subhash Sharma, uh, which was published in Sankalpa, uh, which is a journal of management uh, de uh, development and application. So, this idea is very much explained into uh, uh, that uh, journal. Now, moving ahead, uh, we need to talk about the assets, activities, products and strategic business units which is also known as uh, SBU. So, we have to improve competitive advantage through TRM. So, while uh, applying this entire idea of TRM, it is very much important for us to focus on assets, activities, products and strategic business units. I will be explaining it to you uh, one by one that what is, what do we mean by the term asset, what do we mean by the term activities, products and SBUs. So, assets are classified in terms of uh, their performance. It can be a performing asset, it can be a non-performing asset. So, we basically make a distinction between the performing assets and non-performing assets. Then if we talk about activities, they can also be classified. Uh, in terms of their value addition, it can be a value adding acti add, added activities and it can be non value adding activity. Either your activity is adding some value uh, to the value chain or it is not at all adding any value. And at times it is reducing value into your uh, the activity chain or value chain. If we take products, products can be classified as uh, the products which are contributing positively, positive contribution creating and negative contribution creating. And the last one is, uh, uh, you know, SBUs. The SBUs can be classified as surplus generating, that is, whether your company is a profit center or it is a loss making uh, unit. So, whether it is, uh, is, it is acting as an asset to the business enterprise or it has become a liability for us. So, SBUs can also be classified as surplus generating and loss making. So, these uh, dual classification of all four components, that is, asset, activities, products, and SBUs. It has been done, so I have to. Uh, I can. It can be understood by this uh, by this table where we talk about the asset in terms of performing and non-performing, uh, whether activities are value adding uh, or not value adding. Products are whether whether they are contributing positively or not. SBUs can be profit making or loss making. Products can be prof, uh, positive contrib positively contributing, negatively contributing. And of course, the asset can be performing and non-performing and non-performing can also be called as dead assets. So, we have to basically make a distinction between the, the two routes in relation to these four segments, in relation to these four coordinates when we talk about total resource management. 
So, here the focus is on performing asset when we uh, when we uh, implement total resources man management in a business setup, the entire focus is on performing assets, value adding activities, positive contribution making uh, and, and making products and uh, the profit making as use. So, all positives we are going to take when we take uh, total resources management while making total of totals, uh, we basically focus on the positive side that we do not look at non-performing assets, we basically focus on performing asset. We do not look at value adding activities, we initially look at uh, 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 non-value adding activities, we look at value adding activities and of course, uh, loss making units are not going to be our focus, our focus is always on profit making units. Now, the question comes, what about the negative aspect? Are you going to ignore them? Of course not. We are not going to ignore them. The non-performing assets, non-value adding activities uh, and products with negative contribution or loss making uh, strategic business units, they may need a search, they may actually need a surgical approach. You have to actually work on that. You have to actually take a pause and think that why this asset has become non-performing. What has led to uh, this situation? What is the reason behind, uh, you know, the 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 situation of uh, a business unit which has become a loss making unit, a product which has become a loss making strategic business unit? Why my products are contributing negatively? Why there is no value, a, a, a non-value uh, addition activity into my business enterprise? So we need to we need uh, to adopt a surgical approach. So while maintaining the while implementing this total resources management, on one hand we are working on the positive aspect of our we are focusing on strengthening of the positive aspect. But on the other hand, we have to work on we have to adopt a surgical approach. We have to behave like a, a surgeon, uh, uh, you know, or towards improvement of. Uh, these uh, uh, negative aspects of our uh, business operations or those four coordinates which, which we had just talked about. So, when we talk about surgical approach, what, what does it indicate? It indicates that without, uh, you know, causing any harm to the positive aspect, we have to improvise, we have to strengthen the, the negative aspect of uh, those four coordinates. So, uh, dead assets, value reducing activities, products with high negative contribution and heavy loss making uh, uh, st strategic business units, they need to be eliminated from the portfolio of business. We need to eliminate. Why to, why to bear with the, that venture which is not uh, uh, ma make giving any profit to us? Rather, whatever when we are going to make a grand total, if it is in minus, then of course, it is going to reduce my total. So, the totals of total is necessary for this only, so that we can understand that we are not actually uh, living in verticals only, we have to aggregate them, we have to look at it from, uh, uh, the, from the holistic perspective and it, it actually implies leaving with uh, the excess baggage behind. Why to, why to carry on with the burden of that excess baggage with yourself, when it is, when it is not at all contributing to the, to the grand total. So, such actions would facilitate the entire TRM process. So, when we are going to aggregate all the totals, then we have to leave the excess baggage behind. We should, uh, we should actually eliminate it if it, is, if it is not improving at all. So, initially uh, the surgical approach need to be adopted and if it uh, does not work at all, then of course, uh, there, is, uh, there is always a best way of uh, leaving the excess baggage behind and that we should do. Another dimension of uh, TRM is the TRM and business success cost that what is business success cost that is called as BSC. For effective and efficient uh, TRM that is total resources management, the value that the entire value chain of uh, our business enterprise need, needs a diagnosis from the uh, point of view of uh, those four coordinates which we were talking about. We talked about asset, we talked about activities, products and SBUs. So, that we need to, uh, 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 we need to apply uh, while we are doing a diagnosis of uh, the, the total value chain of my business enterprise and each component of the value chain, it can be analyzed in terms of their efficiency of performing assets, whether they are uh, acting as a performing assets or not, whether uh, there is a potentiality of various activities for value addition or not. 
amount of positive contribution by products is there or not and eventually the amount of surplus or profit generated by strategic business units in the value chain is present or not. So, when we talk about business success cost, we have to analyze the, the four uh, coordinates from this perspective. Then only we can uh, find out that which one is, is, is contributing to the value chain change properly or not. If it is not contributing, we should actually do away with that. We should actually leave that. So, through such kind of analysis, the total value chain of the business can be uh, strengthened by, by the way of shortening or extending the value chain depending upon the specific context of the business in whatever context you are accordingly you can uh, make a decision. So, business success cost what is the cost of my, my of the success of my business that is also a segment where this TRM contributes significantly. So, so it can be understood here that for making any business successful an organization or individual has to take into consideration the business success cost that it has to incur to take care of the total value chain. What is my business success cost? What cost uh, am I bearing to ensure uh, the to take care of my total value chain? So, so that is that is another area or uh, it can be considered as another dimension of total resources management and it is it is very much uh, placed in scope of total resources management. It is very much into the aim and scope of total resources management. Moving ahead, uh, uh, we can also talk about the role of TRM in benchmarking. When we say benchmarking, we are indicating towards uh, setting of standards. So, TRM and benchmarking, what is the role of uh, total resources management and benchmarking that is also uh, a very a significant dimension or another interesting dimension of total resources management. Benchmarking actually helps in identifying the gaps between the standard and the actual that what is the best practice and what is the existing practices. If we try to uh, draw a line of difference between the two we can understand that whether we are working as per the benchmarks or not, whether our performance is as per the best practices or not. And if not, if my existing performance or practice is not as per uh, best practices, then what is the line of difference? What is the reason of difference between the two? Unless we know the, the differences, unless we uh, actuate these two, we cannot uh, uh, make any improvement. So, TRM is here, uh, 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 you know, coming as coming as a uh, as a uh, coming to our rescue in terms of benchmarking. It can be used as a tool. It also helps in drawing up action plans to bridge up the gap. In total resources management, the management practices related to management of various resources are compared with best practices adopted by the best companies in order to identify the gaps and chalk out or, or, or draft the plans to improve the performance of an enterprise. So, in TRM we are basically uh, being very meticulous in terms of uh, uh, benchmarking and we try to find out, we compare, we make a comparison between the best practices and the existing practices and then the reasons for differences are recorded and uh, eventually the, the requisite actions are being taken to ensure and improve the performance of a business enterprise. So, TRM has a very significant role to play uh, in terms of benchmarking as well. Now, another, another dimension of TRM is uh, what is the role of TRM uh, towards stakeholders? The idea of TRM is linked to multiple stakeholders of business as well. The concept of customer satisfaction and customer delight nowadays, it has gained a uh, huge significance or importance in management literature. People talk about when we say share stakeholders, they basically talk about customers only. But we should be aware of the significance of other stakeholders as well. Basically, customers are uh, the stakeholders. We don't deny to the to their role, their significance, because they are the one who who basically offer revenue to the business enterprise. Rest all other stakeholders, they in one way or the other, they are expecting something from uh, from from the business enterprise. But customers along with their expectations, they are contributing to the revenue segment of the business enterprise. That is why they have become very important. And keeping in mind their importance, the customer, the concept of customer satisfaction and delight, it has uh, been highlighted in the management literature uh, off and on or very often it is being uh, highlighted. 
So, both customer satisfactions or what you call as customer delight. If you ask me what is the difference between the two, I would say when your performance as a company is, is exactly as per the expectations of the customers, it means I am making my customer satisfied. But when my customer is, is, is finding my performance beyond their expectations, they feel delighted, they feel elated uh, and, and that is called customer's delight. And it can be achieved uh, at the cost of uh, other stakeholders. So, if you are saying that my company is taking care of customer satisfaction or making my customers delighted and we are ensuring total resources management, then that is not uh, the complete uh, reality. That is not the reality. That can be uh, a, a, a vertical reporting that in one vertical you are doing well. In fact, satisfaction and delight should be for all the stakeholders. What about other stakeholders? What you have uh, done to them? We should uh, not uh, be concerned about only customers or, uh, or shareholders at times. Some people say that shareholders who are offering capital to us, we should basically take care of them. But what about other uh, stakeholders? Corporates can provide uh, delight to their customers, but pollute the rivers and uh, environment. They are causing huge, uh, huge harm to the environment and atmospheric. So, such a delight could lead to social tussle or fight because holistic view has not been taken. So, total resource management never talks about uh, taking into consideration the significance of customer satisfaction only. It does not deny to ensure, ensuring customer satisfaction, but at the same time it says that uh, we need to take care of all other stakeholders. So, TRM basically aims at the optimization of the requirements of all the stakeholders rather than uh, over emphasizing the need of only a few stakeholders. So, each stakeholder group has its own requirement and uh, uh, their happiness or what you call as ananda that comes from satisfaction of their own needs. If uh, the company cares for customers that is offering products at the right price, right uh, set of quality, then they, they feel happy. If you are uh, making proper uh, payment of remuneration for, for, your, uh, uh, for their contributions, your employees feel happy. They are also one of the stakeholders. Suppliers feel happy if payments are made in time and there is transparency and honesty in the organization in dealing with suppliers. Uh, society feels happy if your company is eco-friendly and is not polluting or causing any harm to the, uh, to the, to the environment. Government feels happy if you are paying taxes on time and, and with honesty and integrity. Shareholders feel happy if they get proper return. But my dear learners, we need to integrate uh, uh, all these stakeholders and for that uh, there can be an indicative parameter for developing stakeholders uh, happiness index. Uh, we can aggregate that, that and it can be evaluated by an index which I will be explaining to you in the next lecture of mine. I hope you must have understood the very basic concept of total resources management which I tried to explain to you in today's lecture of mine. Thank you so much.